So these designer crucibles, customized yes. designer, that, that's kind of where you're headed. Uh, yes. Tell me a little, tell us a little bit about that. In 1 Peter 1, 7, Peter is writing to a group of Christians that are going through a lot of trials, a lot of suffering, persecution. And in verse 7, he says, these things that you're suffering, that you're going through is what he's talking about have come to you so that your faith can be proved genuine. Mm -hmm. So that is a designer crucible. God is sovereign, and through his providence, he puts us into crucibles for several reasons. Sometimes it's punishment for sin sure. or discipline. Yeah. Sometimes it's just to grow our faith. It can be... Uh, like the tornadoes that we just saw in the last few days oh, through wow. here. Yeah. Uh, how can you look at those and see that God is in control? Some people can't, but we can because we know God is in control. And he's putting a lot of people through a lot of hard crucibles. And a crucible is... Yeah, I was going to say... Uh, yeah, what is a crucible? It. Yeah. Yeah. I had some background in small manufacturing, and so I worked with a foundry, yeah. and they had crucibles where they would melt aluminum mm. in this big pot yeah. that huh. would not melt, but the, the aluminum would. Melt, the though. crucible is protected. It's a container. Container, yes. If you will. Yeah. And whatever you put in it, whether it's gold or silver, which the Bible talks about a lot in Proverbs, yeah. uh, and... The metal is heated up, and then you skim off the impurities so that you have pure whatever is melted left. Yeah. So God skims out the impurities in our life. That's the purification that we go through. Mm -hmm. And as we are purified, we become more like Christ. But one of the problems, like you said, we don't want to get in a crucible. Right. We avoid it at all costs. <laughs> but that's how God chose to purify us. Right, right. And when he puts us in the crucible, we're being purified uh, in, in verse 12 of James 1. He yeah. said, you blessed is the man who passes the test. Mm. And passing the test is about not giving in to temptation. So when we are put in the crucible, whatever circumstance that God chooses to put us through, Satan is tempting us to pull us away from God at the same time, God is testing us to bring us closer to him. Yeah, yeah. And we, you know, Satan tempts us with our favorite things. What, yeah. What comforts us? Yeah. He said, okay, God's in here. He's holding out on you. He's putting you through this fire. I'll get you out of the crucible. I'll give you comfort, another drink, some drugs, yeah. Yeah. food, whatever comforts you. I'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah. And so we say, okay, we jump out of the crucible. Yeah. We don't pass the test. Mm. Instead of blessings, we don't get any. Right. We may even get consequences from the sin of choosing to get out of the crucible mm. and give in to temptation. Right. And the only thing that can get us back on track to God is confess that sin, mm -hmm. repent, mm -hmm. Get back in the crucible yeah. where we don't want to go. Right. <laughs> where we were in the first place and right. start all over again. And we don't like the crucible because of the heat, the pressure, those yes. things, right? Right. They're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But we learn to trust God yeah. And when we're in the crucibles. Yeah. And the more we go through in life, and I, through my life, all the crucibles that I've been through, I've learned that God's going to use this. Yeah. Romans 5, 3, you know, we also rejoice in our suffering because mm -hmm. it produces perseverance and character, and that produces hope. Yeah. And we have hope when we're in the crucible. Yeah. It's in Hebrews 12, when Jesus said, and he went to the cross for the joy mm. that was set before him. Yeah. And so we have to see that it's joy being in the crucible, knowing where God's going to take us after he purifies us. Yeah. I think the problem many Christians have, and we're not talking about unbelievers here because we know this is true about unbelievers, but Christians have a temporary view. They don't have 
uh, heaven, you know, in view in, in their minds. So they're thinking about getting the best out of this life and squeezing every drop of the of you know money and pleasure and all those things that we find comfort in, like you said, they're not thinking about eternity, and so their mind isn't set on that. Their their mind is set on this earth and yes. getting the best, your best life now, kind of thing. Yes. And what you're talking about requires you to think, okay, I want to be more like Christ for this life, but also for the life to come. 